think happiness is very much about an action it's not it's not the goal you know it's not the destination it's the byproduct of doing things that bring joy not only to yourself they make you happy but they also contribute to the joy of someone else and when we get lost in that space and I, I call it rapture right when you're in that space of doing the things that you love just because it's it's purely joyful in doing it yes. the byproduct you know the reward is this happier place but it's not the destination Yes, I totally agree with that because I, I do. I know when I was younger, um, you know, when I come to America, when I go to America, I'm going to be happy. Right. When I become rich, I'm going to be happy. When I get married, I'm going to be happy. When I have kids, I'm going to be happy. You know what? None of that. None of that did it. Those add to my happiness, but they don't make me happy because a lot of the times I just want to be by myself and I am so happy just being by myself sometime because it's like I need that and I am I need that time for me you know yeah. I don't want the husband around the kids around nobody around it's just Sandra's time and I'm really enjoying that time well I think what you say is really important because if we wait for somebody else to make us happy we'll be tapping our toes you know and and, and you know uh, what do you call it? You know, snapping our fingers, waiting for that person to step up to the plate. There's no one person that can make us happy. Although relationships are an essential component yes. to that joy, the happiness comes from within because it's the relationship of with ourselves to ourselves and what's going on around us. So you can find a happy moment even in a very, very complicated set of circumstances, even in the middle of a horrendous divorce. Yes. You can you can find something to laugh about. You can find something certainly to be grateful about, That's right. even if it's the roof over your head. That's right. You have to focus on what really you want. What you really want. Do you want complaints in your life? Do you want lack in your life? Do you want that miserable people around your life? If the answer is no, it's high time to please shift. Shift your emotions right now from uh, negative to positive from lack to abundance, from hate to love. Love, I said, I told you, is I got the highest vibration. Keep loving people, keep sending that loving thoughts. Even if you don't like someone, please uh, try at least, you know, sending those loving thoughts to them because ultimately what you give is what you are going to get back. Woo! The universal law. Please, re repeat that again with more emphasis. Tell them more about that part. So it's like, you know, uh, what you are going to give, what you are going to release, you are going ultimately going to get back. If I am going to give love, I am going to get back love. If you are going to give anger, I am going to get back anger. That's 100% sure. That's right. That is the theory. Theory. So I, I am completely, you know, my life completely transformed. My, when I switch from my, my emotions pertaining to this sphere of life, whatever I do, it will come back to me. So please, guys, uh, just be aware what you are doing right now, what you are thinking right now. Thought travels, thought has the waves. So whatever you are thinking, it is going to come back to you. I'm a Christian and my husband is Muslim. He has convictions mm -hmm. and I have my own convictions. Mm -hmm. But what had helped me... Um, I can tell you not struggle with his conviction is the fact that I have my own mm -hmm. and I believe what I believe and I stand on what I believe. Mm -hmm. Do you believe what you believe? Do you stand on it? Or are you a wishy-washy, what we call lukewarm? Because in my Bible, it talks about being hot or cold. Isn't that conviction? It's help you. The more conviction you have, it helps you to be either hot or cold. Oh, mostly hot. I like the word that you use. You use wishy-washy. When you are a wishy-washy person, people don't trust you. Mm -hmm. Because you will say yes now and by the time they turn your back, you will say exactly. no. People don't trust you. That exactly. work in work, in family, You everywhere. know who you are. <laughs> so, wishy-washy people are out there, but it's only because they have not taken time to make up their mind of who they are and what they will not do for themselves. That's a good point. With children, I'm telling you, I, I, I am able to see the diamond and the treasure in every person. If you have a problem, you can have a solution. Amen. Yeah, 
So you ask that one person, what is something that is oppressing you? Let's find out. Because see, here's the thing, and I'm going to go back and refer to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's a story in the Old Testament where mm -hmm. a woman is about to die. She doesn't have money. She's left with the debt, and her son is about to die. And when the prophet comes to her, he's asking her, will you make a piece of uh, uh, bread for me? And she says, this piece of bread is going to feed my son and I, and then we're going to die because there's nothing else, right? The man tells her, woman, what do you want me to do for you? But before the woman answers, he says, wait, don't answer. Basically, he says, don't answer. And he says to her, um, what do you have at home? He doesn't let her answer because as women, I know what I would have said. Yes, please bring me, you know, get me money or get me the stuff to pay the debt or, or bring me food for my son. But he didn't let her answer. His first question was, what do you want me to do for you, woman? And then he cuts her off and says, okay, wait a second. What do you have at home? She says, I only have a jar. I have a jar and I have a, um, a little bit of, uh, of oil, and I have a little bit of dough, uh, dough to make dough, flour to make dough. And he says, go get what you have, shut your door, and begin to pour the oil into the other vessels. One thing I know for sure is that no matter what situation you're in, the solution comes with what you already have in your hands. <laughs>
for those watching, values is valores. You gotta find them. You gotta find it and anchor yourself on those. Everything that she said, she mentioned responsibility, forgiveness, and the whole summary of what she was talking about to begin is decision. She made that decision should change her life and not just wallow in self-pity. So tell us more about that. Of course, once you made a decision from that space, it's, it's easier to know what actions uh, we need to take. So I started, uh, I became obsessed with uncovering my abilities, my gifts, my unique talents, and started developing them. So I started exploring. I went through a phase of exploring. I just, uh, I ventured into, I started in uh, the entrepreneurship uh, world, and uh, I realized when I became, uh, I'm, I'm, when I became a business owner of my first company um, seven years ago, I um, uh, learned so much through that journey, and I realized how much I needed to learn to succeed um, in, in this country and the business world. So I started I started investing a lot of time, effort, and money into my self-development. I went to every convention, uh, workshop, uh, you name it, you know, that I could, that I can, I could can think of. And I started um, learning about marketing, uh, business management, uh, team management, sales, and I uh, became the number one insurance agent in the country for the company that I um, that I uh, was uh, that I owned the, my agency with um, because I just became I just started taking massive action on my um, on my development professionally along with growing emotionally, spiritually, mentally. Uh, it was it has been a journey of consistent growth. I was the worst the worst critic of my own self. Yes, yes, it happens. And then again, I realized in the long run, because it, I was, uh, as we said before, it's a process. Yeah. It, it doesn't happen in a day, so it's a process. And uh, when I was working, I was going that journey of uh, changing my way of uh, thinking and be able at the end of the day to master my mind was that uh, you know what you are responsible but you can love yourself you can love your strengths and your weaknesses and then we go to the first point that I wanted to tell you about how to master your mind based on my experience at least and I will we keep learning every day right what well, the first thing was the self-awareness mm -hmm. to understand my strengths and my weaknesses you know Finance helped me a lot, even in my personal development. How? I will tell you now. Strengths and weaknesses, you know, in business school, the one of the first things we do is SWOT analysis. So, when I was trying to understand myself and then master my mind, master my own destiny, and create the destiny that I wanted and I was dreaming about, I was like, I said to myself, okay, so what tools do I have here? Like in finance, you know, you, you sit down and you sit, you think, you go through what I have, my pros and cons, how can I invest, if I can I invest, and all that. So I was saying that from my from my character, from my personality, and I took the strengths of my weaknesses because we all have strengths and weaknesses. My problem back then was that I was paying too much attention to my weaknesses, mm -hmm. and I was trying to to fix them. And then I said, but this is not what I'm doing when I'm working. I pay attention more to my strength and how can I invest better and what can I do with my business. So I was seeing myself as my business. Mm -hmm. So I was emphasizing of my strength and I started loving my weaknesses. Yes, I experienced some challenges. Yes, I was sexually abused. Yes, I had a hard life. Yes, I didn't have food sometimes. Yes, I experienced poverty. Yes, I felt like taking my life. I don't know how many times, but you know what? All of that was part of the journey of who I am right now. And that's the reason why I'm able to share this with you now, because I have embraced all of that.
And yes, I was not the best um, person before, but I have made that decision to be the best that I can right now. And I make that decision every day because I am thankful that I'm still here. I am thankful to have a husband and kids and a life that is mine to live and mine to make a commitment to, mine to one day give responsibility about what I have done with what has been given to me. So I wish you the best in everything that you do. May God bless you and may you continue to learn how to love yourself and embrace who you are. And remember that if you have any questions, please post your questions and I will be very happy to answer them. And I am in my show, um, In Vivo Live. Look for it. If you look for it on YouTube or just go to InVivoAssociates.com and you can see. If you want to share your journey, you want to share your story, please do that. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching The Code.